which you will be able to extinguish all the flames of arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on alert with all the perseverance and petition for all saints. <coughs> now, we want to first of all, in an apology to you last Sunday, as many of us were down with fever, and so the service has to be uh, preempted. <coughs> and thus, as we continue to pray, pray that you will strengthen us. Now, we continue. <coughs> we are seeing on the substance of faith. Now, in the book of Hebrews 11.6, tells us, without faith, we cannot please God. Now, the very key substance of our Christian life, the very cornerstone of our Christian life is faith. If we have no this faith, then we are nothing. <clears throat> we are just an ordinary, defeated uh, human being, is what I would say. I would even say a Christian. We are a defeated human being because the faith isn't there. And here we are to persevere for that faith. We need to labor for that faith very much. So the faith is given as we have seen in Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from the hearing of the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, two ways we hear the word of God. One, you hear the word of God in your own personal meditation. Right? You have your own personal meditation with the word of God. And we give you additional materials such as daily bread so that it can help you in a meditation so that your faith can rest on the word of God. But many of us said, these days, don't even have a own Bible. Don't even have a Bible on your own to see. You know, each Christian's responsibility is to have your own Bible. There's no shared business. All right, that you cannot share one Bible for the whole family. Each individual must have a Bible. Only then, one responsibility of growth in faith. Why is it some of our lives are like a roller coaster? One time it's very high up in the sky, the next time in the rock bottom, and then we are totally lost in the world, and then we see the minute we are the rock bottom, problem besets one after another. You know, it just doesn't uh, come all come all together, and that's the kind of life that we are living in this world. But the Lord has given us something to override all these issues or problems in life. Now, as a human being, we have problems. Every day there is life, there is problem. But as human being, there is always problem. Okay, there's a fact. But the difference between the world and a Christian is that, that we have something different that the world doesn't possess. Then what we possess is faith. We just read this word in Ephesians, turn to it, chapter 6. Look at the very first word it says in verse 16. In addition, in taking up the shield of faith. Look at the word. The shield of faith. Now, the faith is a substance, but the faith is a shield to you. You know what's a shield? You know, when you go into an army, into a war, you don't simply barely go inside. All right? You will be wearing bullet west all right on your body so that any bullets will not able to hit you and then you will be having all the gadgets all right to fall one before the enemy could attack you and that's where the bible tells us in verse 16 is a shield of faith which you will able to extinguish all the flaming sword of the evil one friend this is it when your faith is bare down your bare open you are being striked with swords and directly hitting you and you are down. That's it. The shield of faith isn't working in you because you, you don't have that faith. The faith isn't activated in you. You know, you may have a faith, but it's not activated. You may have faith. The faith is not in action. It's dead. It's redundant. All right? Because our mundane life, our mundane life of our faith, and thus we see having faith all right, it's not just good enough. What is the substance that upholds that faith? For example, look at this belief. 
how can this building have been lasted here for the last 24 years? Here this building is now is about 24 years old. And we see this building has done because deep down on the ground, what we call foundation. Very deep down they have, you know, they digged up down under the core of the earth, they put in the, the, the foundation stones and then they put the concrete on and then this building has been raised. So you see all the tremors around us, the alarity, the amati, the, the commuter runs with all the shiverings. You see vehicles goes, you can hear it, but yet the building stands. Why? Because it is built on the foundation. And so likewise in our Christian life, we have faith. But if that faith is not founded on what we call prayer, that is the biggest issue in our Christian life today. In verse 18 it says, with prayer and petition, pray at all times. It doesn't tell you to pray at certain times. Pray with all times. All right? And be on alert with perseverance and petition for all saints. Prayer. Prayer is so important, my friend, for your faith. But today, so said, we have no time for prayer. We have got time for all the business outside of the world. We got time all to run and run in the business and to see to the world's need. But said, your faith is being eaten up. Your faith has been eaten up by the unseen termites in a building. Your faith has been completely eroded. All right? And that's the reason when your faith is eroded, we display. Like what? We display there's no emotion for God at all. There's no more love for God at all. all right? We see in the book of Ephesians. All right? Ephesians were known for the first love. They loved God so much. The agape love. And God commended, Paul commended on the Ephesians, on their labor of love towards God. But what happened? Years and years and passed by. You know, you know, this is what the problem is. When we come to know the Lord, you are on fire. And after some saturating period, you know, once it's saturated, the fire just becomes a smoke. And after a smoke, it dies off. Right? But you never keep it alive. You never keep it aflame. Now, to keep it aflame, to keep it alive, this faith is you need prayer. We need to struggle in prayer. We need to go in time into prayer, into supplication. Only then we can able to survive. My friend, you may have a new car. What is the point of being a new car if you don't have fuel in it? Do you think a car can run? Same as that. In your Christian life, you may have faith. You can show the whole world you're a Christian. You can wear a big cross on your neck. All right? And show the whole world that you're a Christian. But what is the point when you are just a defeated Christian? Nothing. Zero. Okay? We have just become zero because there's no prayer in your life. There's no, your faith is not activated in any way. Your prayer is not activated at all. You can have a mobile phone. All right? The mobile phone will not do any good until you are activated it with the network. Same thing. You have faith. But if your faith is not activated by prayer daily, it's nothing. You're, you're useless. It's redundant. And that's where Paul, time and again, Paul constantly, time and again, he brings up this matter to every of the churches that he has founded, every of the churches that he has ministered, every saint he has prayed. Today we have seen that we are too busy to pray. We have no time to pray. And then when someone even can even say this, you know, when you begin to pray, the devil attacks you more. And he brings you more trouble. Friends, it's true. Because why prayer becomes a big problem for all of us? Because the devil is attacking us. Because the devil, Satan knows. The minute you begin to kneel and pray, he shudders. He's very frightened for the prayer. The minute you say you want to pray, he, he's shivering because you're defeating him. So what he does, he brings every other obstacles into your life. He brings everything so busyness into your life so that you have no time for prayer. Friends, we saw some two weeks ago. 
There are many of us who say, you know, sometimes I said, no time to pray. You know, I'm so busy in prayer. And no time to, you know, to, to pray. And therefore, Samuel says, if I don't pray for my king, I sin against God. Yes. If you don't pray as a Christian, you sin against God. Simple as that. I did not say this. One Samuel tells us very clearly when they turn and say, Do you pray for King Saul? And here Samuel says, If for God forbid me, if I do not pray for my king, I sin against God. Friends, you see the vital point. The connection between us all right, and God is faith. And the connection between us and God faith, which is being supported by prayer. And if you cannot spend time in prayer, and it is a worthless Christian life that we are leading. Our Christian life is just zero. It's only a name Christian. Alright? The word Christian. Now you remove the word Christ and the word Christian. The word remains I A N, which means I am nothing. That's it. So today, in this busy world, we find it so hard to spend time to pray. How many of us are really struggling, all right, to take time to pray? That you'll pray in your own personal prayer. Start with the personal prayer in your own personal way. There are ways to pray that not necessarily that you need to have a, a war room, all right, if you have one, good. But you can pray while you're driving. You can pray while you're walking. You can pray while you're doing things, my friend. God is ever listening. And his line is never busy when he call upon you. And so we see here that to shield off your faith from all the attack flames and arrows from the evil one, is your faith is the shield. Alright, the shield is your faith that whatever comes and it attacks your faith is it get defeated. But what happens? That shield of faith has got holes. That it can penetrate through and come in to attack you. What are these holes? Lack of prayer. <coughs> we have this lack of prayer. We don't pray at times. We don't pray at all times. What more? We don't even pray for five minutes a day. We don't even pray for five minutes a day with the saddest part of it. So why prayer? Friends, is so important. Prayer is so important. Ian Bond says this. Now, prayer is not a duty. All right? Prayer is not a duty, but it is a privilege that we enjoy with God. Right? We enjoy with God and having a time with Him, speaking to Him. How many of us have really, really sat down with God, talk to Him as the way you talk? Alright, some of us think our prayer means that you must have some gigantic words to pray. You know, you must have a system to pray. There's a way how to pray. Nothing of that sort, my friend. The way I'm talking to you, you talk to our Heavenly Father. The way you talk to one another, that's the way you talk to your Father. You'll be shocked to see India. I've been so many times to many of the churches there. You can see people when we are praying. You know, they will be in tears and crying to the Lord. You know, they don't call him Lord. They don't call him God. They call him Daddy. Can you see the kind of intimacy they are having? You know, the personal calling our God the Father Daddy. Calling him Abba. Calling him Father. You know, it's how nice to hear. I don't hear this in Malaysia at all, my friend. That we don't have this kind of daddy son daddy daughter relationship because we have no time at all to pray said why today in many christian life trouble after trouble woos after woos are adding on on continuously because the devil has got a free play in your life because your faith is no more shield you're simply open for attack your faith is no longer has the way your faith is no longer has a substance of prayer to keep it going. That is the biggest weakness. And that is what the devil looks at as an everlasting love. Alright, you may say you call yourself Christian. You may say I'm a Christian. You can talk to people outside that you're a Christian. But what is the point when the faith isn't is activated by your prayer? You know, 
many a time we see Yem Bound says, all right, if you do not pray in the morning, you will never see him in your day. All right, it's very true, my friend. And any prayer man will ever say that the day that you begin the day, you know the problem, listen, let me tell you one secret. If you want to see your day to be fine, if you want to see your day to be good, if you want to see your day to be wonderful, you see how God is working, obey what you do. The minute you get up in the morning, after all your chores or whatever, all right, your breakfast and whatever you do, take the time to pray before the Lord and tell Him, what are you going to do? All right, tell Him, what are you going to do for that day? I'm going to work. I'm going to meet Mr. A, B, C, D, E. Have you told this to the Lord? That's the Lord our God. You know, the whole world knows your telephone number. Does your Lord God know your telephone number? Yes. He's an omniscient God. He knows all knowing. But God wants us to tell him. Because we are his children. We become personal. We have intimacy, relationship with him. But do we have that kind of relationship? Does the Lord know where you are living? Friend, this is where we have no intimacy with God. We think God is all-knowing. He knows everything. Yes, He knows everything. But God also wants us to speak to Him. How many of us have prayed, Lord, I'm staying in this house. I'm staying in this area. Lord, just take care of this area. How many of us have prayed for that? We have not. There is it's a prayerless life that we are leading. And that is a reason, my friend, troubles of a trouble, problem after problem, you will face more and more problem if you continue to live in this life. What more? The devil is all out attack in your life. Alright? If you continue to go on without prayer life, with no faith, no church, no meditation, no reading the word of God, alright, and no time to pray, Friend, let me tell you this. There are people, Christians, who have committed suicide. Sad. After knowing God, after knowing Jesus personally, all right, to, to commit suicide is woe unto them. Don't ever think they will ever go to heaven. All right, it is sad. In all in your struggles, when I tell you in 45 or years of Christian life, in these years of Christian life, prayer has been the cornerstone. However the chips has been down, however the crisis has pulled you down, I kept on to prayer. I kept on calling to God. All right. And the Lord knows. He's a seeing God. Our God is a God, not a God who just lets you loose like that. He takes care of everything. He says, every tears of yours, he puts in a bottle and he keeps it. He wants to remember it. And he says, you are the apple of his eyes. If anyone who touches that, he will touch them. All right? But are we in that position? Are we in that position that, you know, we can able to say, Lord, I am the apple of, you know, of his eyes? Are we? There's no prayer in our life. There's no communication with God. All right? We are scared. When we start to pray, more trouble will come. So, I don't pray, no problem. But that's the worst. You know prayer also got problem. Okay? That's the world we're living. The devil is so smart. Huh? You pray also, bring you problem. You don't pray also, more problem. Alright? So which is better? When you persevere in prayer, let me tell you this. When you persevere in prayer, the coming week I will share with you what your prayer can be powerful with. And how your prayer, when you begin to confess it in your mouth and prayer, you can see how you can tame the lion. Remember Daniel. He had been thrown into the lion's den. Alright? For what? For thing that he did not do anything. Due to jealousy. Alright? We're going to see that later. Jealousy. So what happened? They went and reported to King Darius. And when King Darius called Daniel, because he favored Daniel very much. You know what was Daniel doing? He knew things were against him. That's the best part. Huh? Daniel knew he had things against him coming. 
You know what he was then doing? He did not sit with all his friends and, you know, actually, how shall we attack this? Huh? This fellow is coming like this. Huh? This fellow is saying this. Huh? This fellow telling this. Huh? How to do this? Huh? How am I to 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 honor all these fellows? Read the word of God, which we will read next week. Huh? In Daniel chapter six, Daniel was praying three times a day. He was praying, and because of his prayer, my friend, you we just heard. You pray for problem. You don't pray more problem. Okay? Here he prayed. He prayed and prayed and prayed. Alright? He went into a problem. What problem? He was put into the lion's den. Alright? And he may be thinking, Lord, I've been praying and praying and praying and then you're throwing me into the lion's den. And the lions have been kept hungry for three days. Alright? So the minute they throw me down, they're going to tear me to pieces. Daniel could have said that, but he never. They threw him into the into the den, into the den. You know what happened? His power of prayer was there, my friend. The lions all sat down with their mouths closed. Can you see now the power of prayer? Can you see how God works? We all think God is this small. All right. Because problem comes, we don't pray. Because problem comes, we don't read the word of God. Because of prayer, we don't want to have faith. Because of that, we don't want to, you know, worship Him. This is the problem. This is what the devil is trying to do. Learn. We've been seeing from week after week on the subject of faith. Some of you have missed some of the best portions of word that are brought to you before weeks, previous weeks. How God, right, through our faith, we can able to outshine. Through faith, all right, Paul says, we do not go by sight, we go by faith. Right? We do not just simply go by sight. We go by faith. Moses did that. He came to the dead end. He came to a dead end of the Red Sea. <clears throat> and he turned back and looked. The Egyptians were coming. And this time they're coming not just to capture the entire Israelite to take it back to Egypt. They're coming right now with all the horses and the chariots, with all those best spears. You know why? They are felt cheated by the Israelites and so Pharaoh says finish them, kill them alright and, and lay them on the and come off them and then so the people all would begin to cry to Moses and say listen you mean to say there's no graveyard for us in, in Egypt why you brought us here they are all going to slaughter us here we got children, we have elderly people we have women and we have cattle we have sheep alright and they are going to slaughter us but that one man that is Moses he turned to the Lord and he did not go by sight. Huh? He looked at the, the, the Egyptians who were coming. He saw them, but he turned to the Lord in faith. And he says, listen, he doesn't know what the Lord is going to do. He didn't even say doesn't know. He didn't even have an inkling what God is going to do. But he called upon the God and said, God, you're a God of salvation. You have brought us this far. We leave it in your hand. What God did? A strange wind came. The Red Sea parted and the wet land became dry land. The people walked through and went the other side. My friend, this man went by faith, not by sight. It is just like we are opposite, like the Israelites. They were all going by sight. But this man went by faith. Why? Moses spends time in prayer. Moses spends time in prayer. He takes time in prayer. He counsels in prayer with the Lord. And the Lord speaks to him. And we see. So friend, which is better? Not to pray and have more problem. Feeling like dying. Or rather pray. And shut the lion's mouth. Choice is yours. At the same time. Check your salvation. You want to go to heaven words? Look at now what is happening in Middle East, my friend. Middle East, the benchmark of these last days. Ezekiel chapter 36 and 37 is pretty clear. The Bible that you are having is the book of prophecy. It is the book of yesterday, the book of today, and the book of tomorrow. Alright? And the word of God will never fade away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not the word of God. And so we see here, what we are reading in the book of Revelation, 
what we are reading in the book of Ezekiel, what we are reading in the book of Daniel about the last day, it's happening right now. We are seeing what is the United States election going to be like. If Kamala Harris wins, Israel will be, what, desolated. And that is almost the end of time, my friend. Even if Trump wins, then what will be the next stage? It's all in the scripture. It is all there. A woman will come into power. Friends, the Bible doesn't lie. And that's the reason, 21st century, the Bible is one of the best seller. And every minute, a Bible has been given to someone or someone purchases. And it's one of the best sellers till today. In 21 centuries passed by, and there's no other book has overtaken it. And so we see in the book of prophecies coming to pass. We see what is happening right now. Uh, Jews are the chosen race of the Lord. And you look at them, how they've been downtrodden. Look at them, how the anti-Semitic things are happening right now. These are days of last days, my friend. And the scripture tells us he will come like a thief in the night. A thief will not tell you when he's going to come. How many of us have this fear in our spine? If the Lord were to appear the next hour and the rapture is going to take place, and if you are left behind, I go to you. Seven years of tribulation, you're going to suffer. All right? And the Bible tells us in the seven years are divided by three and a half, and the next three and a half years, all Christians who believe in Jesus will be eating grass. You know what? You cannot buy, you cannot sell, you cannot do anything. You cannot even buy bread to eat. You can't buy food to eat. If you don't have the mark of the beast, six, six, six here or on your forehead. Time is coming. All pedigree dogs already got the chips. Uh, now we are talking about the Malaysian government are talking about chips instead of my card. Alright, because my card are being lost. Alright, in a year alone, uh, just one year alone, last year alone. 950,000 ID cards are lost. So these cards are gone into someone's hand to be misused. So, what is the best way? Now they are looking into ways how to have the microchips into your body so that you will not lose your IC. You will not lose your IC at all. Can you see how the devil is working? It is all in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Read it. 666, six, six, the mark of the beast. It is just like four years ago when we had COVID. All right? And when it was relaxed, when you enter into a supermarket, when you went into a shop, what must you do? You have to show your Mysa Jatra. If you don't show your Mysa Jatra, you have no entry into the building. Am I right? All right? You have to show that you are the vaccination. Same thing, my friend. Time is coming. If you don't have your chips, all right, where the Malaysian government will declare that we all not going to have my card is being read. My card will be removed, and all citizens have to have a biochip in our bodies. Now you tell me, are you Christians going to put it on? All right. Do you see the challenge? If you don't want to go into that era, I believe the Lord will come before you. All right, to take us up. In, into the clouds to take us in rapture all right if you are truly a believer if you're truly a believer in the lord if you really love the lord and you kept your faith and your prayer life and you kept your word of god my friend you will be taken up in rapture that's what the word of god tells us it's the promise god says he takes you up to a paradise all right, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4, first, those who are dead in the Lord will rise again. Then those who are living in the twinkling of an eye all will be taken out. That's the Bible. That's a rapture. Are you prepared for that? Why did you come to the Holy Communion just now? What is the Holy Communion? Holy Communion is not for the, you know, for the sake of your privilege you have. Holy Communion is for you to check yourself. Are you in the Lord or not? And to check yourself to say, and ask the Lord if any sins in your forgiveness. 
if you don't want to ask forgiveness of sins, hardness of heart. What happens the Lord comes at 2 o'clock today? Will you be taken up? Think about it. That shows your faith. There's no humility in us. We, we are angry with someone. We are upset with someone. We don't want. All right? All we come to the Holy Communion with our confession of sin is an abomination. We are taking things very lightly. Not seriously. Make this a call to you. All right? Serious call in your Christian life. Whether you want to be in the Lord or out of the Lord. You decide. Because faith is what today has been hit left, right, center from the devil. He wants to ensure you that you should not at all have this faith. To ensure you not to have that faith is not have prayer life at all. Alright? Paul tells us to the churches, spend time prayer. Devote yourself in prayer. But do we really? Do we have time? Alright, let me tell you this. You don't pray, you will have thousands of problems in your life. You pray, you will have problems, not thousands, in hundreds. But all the hundreds, lion's mouth will be shut, close. They will not even come near you. Believe me, what I'm telling you. So just believe this. The word of God is so clear, my friend, that by faith we please God. By faith we please Him. God sees in you the faith that you have in Him. We are reading the Bible every time. We read about Abraham's faith. How God blessed him. We read about Moses' faith. How God blessed him. We see Isaac's faith. How God blessed him. We see how Jacob's faith. God blessed him. So we have spiritual giants. Alright. How God blessed their faith. Why? Because their faith was strong in the Lord. And they had time with God. Friends, whatever you're doing right now. This is a total last call for all of us. Spend time in prayer. Take time to pray. And you will see how your problems one by one are getting eradicated. You will see how prayer becomes so important because you are communicating with the almighty God. Even the God of Satan. I repeat. You are praying to a God who is the God of Satan. And if Satan wants to do anything to do with you, he has to get permission from God. Remember that. Alright? So, make sure your life, faith, is not by sight, by faith. And ensure, begin it from today. Go back home and spend some time in some corner. Alright, for five to ten minutes, just cry out to the Lord. Tell him that you have failed him in areas, right? God has instructed us to pray. God has instructed us to pray and to come before Him, to spend time in prayer, to have an intimacy relationship with God. And that is why prayer is important. You may say, why prayer? Why we need to pray? Right? Yes. We ought to pray. We must pray in order to let you know what is in your heart you have to tell the Lord God. You need to reveal what is in your heart to you need to tell all to the Lord God, only then He will know. Though He is an omniscient God, but God wants you to talk to Him. And so it is very important, my friends. So let us understand this. If you want your faith to be strong, you need to have some time with God in prayer. And if you have no prayer in your life, don't blame anybody. Don't blame God. Don't blame Satan. All right, don't blame any human being the problem that you're going through. Okay, you blame yourself. Because the Lord has given you a way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. But nobody wants that way. All right, as I just told you, everybody wants the Christ, the cross of that Christ. But nobody wants the Christ of that cross. Everybody likes to wear a cross on their neck. All right? It's a blank one. All right? But nobody wants Jesus Christ of that cross. Everybody wants the cross of that Jesus Christ. Right? 
So let's not be a superficial Christians right now and namesake Christians is worthless because deep down in you whether you are heaven or earth is a big question mark where is your faith today what is your faith level today have you ever spent time ever ever spent time in prayer have you ever thought about that and now realize this in the midst of all your busyness my friend all that will count zero when you stand before the mighty God on the day of judgment. You cannot tell, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did good deeds, I did all the things. The Lord says, I never know you. Remember that in Matthew chapter 7, it's very clear about it. So friends, next week we're going to see the prayer that we're going to pray, how we grow closer to God, and we see how the prayer of the life of the apostles and how they gain strength, how they gain boldness, how they gain courage. Your prayer. We will see that next week. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer.